Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about something called molar heat of fusion and molar heat of vaporization. So what is molar heat of fusion? Well it says right here that the molar heat of fusion of a substance is the amount of energy associated with one mole of that substance either freezing or melting at its melting point or freezing point. And the molar heat of fusion for water is 6.02 kilojoules per mole. So what does this mean? Well, what this means and what this is telling us is that there's a certain amount of energy associated with substances changing state of matter as they go from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or gas to liquid and liquid back to solid. There is a certain amount of energy that is either uh, released or absorbed during those changes in state of matter. And so if we take a look right here, let's suppose we have one mole of ice, that is one mole of water that is in the solid state, and this water is at its freezing point or melting point at zero degrees Celsius. And what we want to do with this one mole of, uh, of ice is we want to turn this into one mole of water, one mole of H2O liquid at the same temperature. So there's not going to be any sort of temperature change. However, what is happening here is that this ice is going to melt. It's going to change states of matter. And so there's a certain amount of energy that is associated with substances changing state of matter. So how much energy would this one mole of water need to, uh, of ice, need to absorb in order to turn into this one mole of water over here, provided there is no temperature change? Well, that is what the molar heat of fusion tells us. The molar heat of fusion tells us how much thermal energy this one mole of ice is going to need to absorb in order to turn into one mole of water, provided there is no temperature change. And this ice here is going to need to absorb 6.02 kilojoules of thermal energy from its surroundings in order to melt it into this water. And if we go the other way, if we take a look, uh, let's suppose we have this one mole of water right here at zero degrees Celsius and we want to freeze this one mole of water. So there is no temperature change going on here, but there's a change in state of matter. How much thermal energy will this water need to release in order to change into ice over here? Well, that is also a heat of fusion example. This water right here will need to release 6.02 kilojoules for every one mole that we have of it in order to turn back into ice. Okay, so the molar heat of fusion uh, is the amount of energy associated with one mole of that substance either freezing or melting at its melting point or freezing point. And understand that for water, the molar heat of fusion for water is 6.02. Okay, if the ice is melting, it's going to absorb thermal energy and the sign will be positive. And if the water is freezing, then uh, the water here is going to release thermal energy and the sign will be negative. So let's take a look at the molar heat of vaporization next. So what is molar heat of vaporization? Well, it says right here that the molar heat of vaporization of a substance is the amount of energy associated with one mole of that substance condensing or vaporizing at its boiling point or condensation point. And the molar heat of vaporization for water is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. So let's, let's suppose once again we have one mole of H2O here. And this water right here in the liquid state is at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, right? It's on the verge of boiling, right? And so what we're going to end up doing with this water is that this water is going to change states of matter and turn into water vapor. So we're going to end up having one mole of H2O gas over here. And the temperature of this is going to be 100 degrees Celsius. So there is no change in temperature. However, there is a change in state of matter going on. We're converting this water into water vapor. So the question here is how much thermal energy, how much thermal energy will this water right here need to absorb in order to turn one mole of it at 100 degrees Celsius to one mole of water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius? Well, this water right here will need to absorb 40.7 kilojoules of thermal energy. We have one mole of water and so it will have to absorb 40.7 kilojoules of thermal energy 
In order to turn this one mole of water into water vapor, provided that there is no temperature change. Okay, so understand that concept that the molar heat of vaporization is the amount of thermal energy needed to turn a liquid into a gas. And if you're going the other way, this gas is going to have to release. This water vapor is going to have to release. That's the negative sign you see right here. That means it's going to have to release 40.7 kilojoules for every one mole of water vapor in order to turn it back into liquid water at zero degrees Celsius with no temperature change happening. Okay, so that is the molar heat of vaporization of, of, uh, of objects. And in this example here, water. So, do all substances have the same heat of vaporization and heat of fusions? No. So, let's take a look at a table now that shows us different substances and their molar heats of vaporization and molar heats of fusion. So, in this table, what we're looking at is just a, a table of different substances. And if we take a look, we can see their heat of fusions and uh, molar heat of vaporizations in the last two columns here. For example, we just got done saying that water has a heat of fusion of 6.02 kilojoules per mole and a heat vaporization of 40.7 kilojoules per mole. But I just wanted to show you that different substances have different heat of fusions and heat of vaporizations. For example, ethanol, that is the alcohol that is in wine and spirits, has a heat of fusion equal to 7.61 kilojoules per mole and heat of vaporization of 26.0 kilojoules for every mole. And if we take a look, we can see methane, we can see sodiums, we can see lead's heat of uh, fusion and heat of vaporization here, aluminum's heat of fusion and heat of vaporization here. And so different substances have different molar heats of fusion and uh, molar heats of vaporization. And so now what we can do is we can use a chart or a table like this to start performing calculations where we're asked to figure out how much thermal energy or heat is uh, is absorbed or released during uh, different changes in state of matter. And so let's go ahead and work on a few examples where we perform those types of calculations. So in this first example, we are asked to calculate the amount of thermal energy associated with 125 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius turning into water at zero degrees Celsius. So the first thing that we see here is that there is no change in, 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 in temperature, but there is a change in state of matter. So this is going to be, uh, if we take a look here, the ice is turning into water. This is going to be a heat of fusion problem, a heat of fusion problem, right? We have ice turning into water. The temperature here is zero degrees Celsius. The temperature here is zero degrees Celsius. So we want to know how much thermal energy this ice is going to need to absorb in order to turn into water. And so this is a heat of fusion problem. And so we're starting off with 125 grams of water that's in the solid state. And we're asked to figure out how much thermal energy is associated with this amount of, uh, of ice turning into water. And so what we first have to do is we have to convert the uh, grams of water into moles of water. So we're going to go ahead and divide by the molar mass of water. And if you remember, the molar mass here is going to be 2.02 .02 from the periodic table. And from here, it's 16.00. And if you forgot how to calculate a molar mass, I recommend that you click that little card that just appeared in the top right corner and review how to calculate a molar mass. And so we know that there are 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of water. We'll go ahead and just put the state of matter here. And so now if we take a look, what this is telling us right here is that for every one mole of H2O, it looks like that's in the solid state. It's telling us that this water or this ice here is going to need to absorb a positive 6.02 kilojoules, right? We'll keep the sign positive because the ice here is going to need to absorb thermal energy in order to melt. And so when we put this in our calculator, we will end up with 41.3 kilojoules, a positive 41.3 kilojoules. So how much thermal energy will this ice here, this 125 grams 
of ice need to absorb in order to melt it, provided there is no temperature change? Well, it looks like that ice is going to need to absorb 41.3 kilojoules of thermal energy. Let's take a look at another problem. In this second example, it says to calculate the amount of thermal energy associated with 255 grams of water vapor condensing at 100 degrees Celsius. So we have, if we read this, we have 255 grams of water vapor here. And this water vapor is at 100 degrees Celsius. And what's going to end up happening to this water vapor is that it's going to condense and turn back into liquid water. So we're going to have the same quantity. We're going to have 255 grams of this stuff. And the temperature is not going to change. It's going to stay 100 degrees Celsius. And what we want to know is how much thermal energy or how much heat is going to need to be released from this water vapor in order to turn it back into liquid water. And so this is going to be a heat of vaporization problem, a heat of vaporization problem. So in this problem here, we're starting off with 255 grams of H2O that is in the gaseous state. And we want to figure out how much energy or how much heat is going to need to be released by this water vapor in order to turn it back into water. There is no temperature difference here. And so all we need to do is, is take a look at the heat of vaporization of this water vapor. We have 255 grams of water, and we know that one mole of water is going to be 18.02 grams of water. Right, this here is the molar mass of water. Molar mass of H2O from our periodic table is 18.02. And then what this is telling us, the heat of vaporization for water, is that for every one mole of water vapor turning into liquid water, it's going to have to release 40.7 kilojoules. So negative 40.7 kilojoules of energy need to be released and so now we just take our calculator out and take 255 divided by 18.02 times negative 40.7. And we're going to end up with negative 575.9 or rounded to the three sig figs. This is going to be 576, negative 576 kilojoules of thermal energy will need to be released by this 250 gram. 55 grams of water vapor in order for it to turn back into water. Let's take a look at another example. In this example here, it says to calculate the amount of thermal energy associated with 75 grams of water turning into ice at its freezing point. So we have 75 grams of water at its freezing point, which is zero degrees Celsius, right? This water is going to freeze and turn into 75 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius, right? And so what we're asked to figure out here is how much thermal energy this water is going to need to release in order to turn into ice. And so this is a heat of fusion problem. And so if we take a look, we have 75 grams of H2O liquid. And the very first thing we're going to have to do with this is we're going to have to convert the grams of water to moles of water. We know one mole of H2O is 18.02 grams of H2O. We'll go ahead and put the state of matter here. And so if we take a look now, what this is telling us is that for every one mole of water, it's going to have to release 6.02 kilojoules of energy in order to turn it into ice. So negative 6.02 kilojoules. And so now we just take our calculator out. We'll take 75. We'll divide by 18.02. We'll multiply by negative 6.02. And we'll end up with negative 25.1. Or negative 25 if we're using the correct number of significant figures kilojoules. So it looks like this 75 grams of water is going to need to release 25 kilojoules of heat in order to turn it into ice, provided that the temperature stays the same. Let's take a look at one final example. In this last example, it says to calculate the amount of thermal energy associated with 85 grams of water turning into water vapor at its boiling point. So in this problem here, we have 85 grams of water 
at its boiling point, which is 100 degrees Celsius, and this is going to turn into water vapor, right? So we're going to have 85 grams of water vapor at its boiling point. So there is no temperature change here. All that's happening is a change in state of matter. So this is going to be a heat of vaporization problem. And so we have 85 grams of water, liquid water. And the first thing we're going to have to do is convert this into moles. Since we have the molar heat of vaporization right here, we have to convert the grams of water to moles. We know that one mole of H2O liquid has a mass of 18.02 grams. And then if we take a look, what this is telling us is that for every one mole of water, it's going to have to absorb 40.7 kilojoules of energy in order to turn it into water vapor. So for every one mole of water, it will need to absorb, so we'll put a positive sign, 40.7 kilojoules of thermal energy and so now we just take our calculator we take 85 divided by 18.02 and multiply by 40.7 and we will end up with 192 a positive 192 kilojoules and if we're asked to use the correct number of significant figures here in our answer our answer can only contain two sig figs so we'll just have to round to 190 kilojoules of thermal energy that will need to be absorbed by this 180 or uh, by this 85 grams of water in order to convert it to water vapor. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.